All right. Well, look, I think we will get going. Um, hi, everyone. Hey. A big welcome to you all for the very first G2Z online event. Thank you for joining us. We are really disappointed that we won't be seeing you in person this year, but uh, we're also excited for this new direction. So in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. For those of you who I haven't met before, my name is Nell Thompson and I'm the coordinator of the National Getting to Zero or as it's referred to G2Z program. I'll be hosting the webinar for you today. However, we will blame any glitches on Zoom or the internet gods. <laughs> Not my fault at all. Uh, Getting to Zero was developed by the Animal Welfare League of Queensland and they continue to support it to this day. G2Z offers its consulting support and educational services at no charge to local governments and not-for-profits across Australia. Our focus continues to be on companion animal welfare and management issues such as strategy, legislation, operations, programs and community engagement working towards reducing intake to pounds and shelters and keeping pets in their homes. We invite people to take a look at our website at www.g2z.org.au and sign up for our regular e-news, connect with us via social media and get in touch with us if you have any questions, if you think we might be able to help or just to have a chat about the issues that you're facing in your community or organisation. And so to today's session, once I hand over to our presenter, there'll be around 50 minutes of presentation and around 10 minutes of question time once the presentation has concluded. The recording of this webinar will be accessible via our website to everyone to watch at any time. We're going to ask that everyone mutes themselves during the presentation unless our presenter indicates otherwise. And if you have questions, you can start putting them in the Q&A section and we'll get through as many as we can at the end of the session. If you have very quick questions that relate to your understanding of the content, put your hand up. You'll see it down the bottom of your screen there's a raise hand button and we'll try and get to you during the presentation. We have some polls as part of the presentation today. So get involved and click the buttons. We wanna know what what you're doing and what's affecting you guys. And as always, please excuse any working from home background noises that may filter through. They definitely won't be my dogs barking. <laughs> We're very excited to have Chris Roy here with us today for the Australian launch of the Foster Space platform. I'm gonna let Chris introduce himself and give you the lowdown on who he is and what he does. Um, but I'm going to bring up a quick Poll, hopefully, before we kick off. Actually, I think the first poll, Chris, is in your um, presentation. So we will, I will okay. hand over to Chris okay. and we'll have question time at the end. Thanks, Chris. All right. Thank you, Nell. And thanks everybody for having me. I'm really excited to be here and to talk about technology. I'm a technology guy. So um, as Nell said, we'll do a couple of polls during here. We'll have plenty of time for questions. Uh, I tend to talk fast, so I will do my best to not talk too fast. Um, but if I do, just uh, as she said, raise your hand or something like that, and I'll try and slow down. I'm also going to turn my camera off here just so that I, it's not distracting as I'm kind of talking through, and I'll turn it back on as we um, come back together and do Q&A at the end. So turn that off and we'll get going here. So as Nell said, um, my name is Chris Roy. I'm a technology guy in my day job and I'm the founder and creator of Dubert.com, uh, which is an online software platform custom built uh, for animal rescuers like all of you. It's kind of like a combination of Match.com for shelters and rescues to find partners. And then uh, we've got a lot of transport functionality, um, kind of like a volunteer-based Uber to get the animals where they need to go. And then of course, tonight I'll talk to you about Foster Space, which is our newest innovation as well. Um, so I love doing technology stuff, as I said, and I'm supported by my amazing wife, Daphne, and we have 
four cats and one dog. And for those of you that wonder, that was Dubert there. You can see an orange and white tabby. And uh, the company was named after Dubert. He is no longer, no longer with us, but his legacy lives on. So, so what are we going to talk about today? So first, we're going to talk a little bit about the impact that COVID, uh, one year, right, is, that we've been living this, has had on foster programs. We're going to talk about some of the limitations of existing technologies, uh, we'll talk about the elements of a scalable foster program and then some new technology that's bringing it all together. So I think as all of you know, since we've all, all 7 billion people on the planet, we've all been living this for the last year. When COVID hit, it really changed fostering. It moved it to center stage. Most organizations, both in the US and I think in Australia had different levels of foster programs. Some of them had very big foster programs, some of them not so much. But as soon as you know this hit, I think it really forced the shelter organizations to switch more to a foster model. And you can see this was all the, you know, all of the discussion, everything that was talked about in the news, lots of news stories uh, about trying to get people engaged and, and to become a foster and take care of animals. I know that the greater good, I remember, did a, a plea here in the US and they managed to sign up 80,000 uh, foster volunteers in a matter of just a few weeks of doing some campaigning. So it really did move fostering to the center stage. Now, when you looked at what did this do within our, within our industry, it really kind of forced us to back up and think about this. And, and there was a lot of rebranding going on about taking, almost taking advantage of the COVID crisis to try and get people to engage and be fosters and to empty the shelters. And a lot of people stepped up because they were working from home. Um, I know I was, I, I think it's been a year to the day practically that I've been now working from home all the time. And this was a wonderful sight to see, lots of empty shelters where all of the animals were no longer actually in the shelters, they were in foster homes, they were in adopted homes. Um, and so the general public really stepped up. We as an industry really kind of doubled down. There's, there's lots of resources and there's been lots of resources on fostering. Uh, from a shelter perspective for many years, but I think I know I saw lots more blog posts and webinars and really a lot of great resources trying to support organizations that wanted to embrace a foster program. So all of the national organizations were putting out regular things on foster care, um, everything from the basics of studying up a foster program to some more advanced foster you know, functionality where people are doing it in group fosters or, you know, the Foster Next program and having somebody on deck. Um, lots of different things that the national organizations were putting out really trying to support this move to a foster centric model uh, as we were all trying to figure out what was the next step, you know, what was going to happen uh, with COVID and this global crisis, how long is this going to take? So I think there was a definite need to put out more education and get the tools into the hands of all the organizations globally that were trying to do this. But like anything else, when we had to really move quickly into a foster centric model, there were some things that I think everybody started to realize. Number one was that most shelter management software is very limited when it comes to trying to run a foster program. So managing the onslaught of new foster applications for one became a really big problem. It was really hard to, to separate people that wanted to be fosters from adopters. Just the processes were not there. We weren't prepared for that level of fostering. Um, onboarding, training, supporting them became a priority. And trying to scale this type of a foster program became really difficult. So when organizations moved from say 10 or 15 fosters and then tried to move into 100 or 200 or even upwards of 1,000, trying to scale all of the processes that go along with it, the support, the training, you know, keeping up with all that really became a problem. So there's a lot of rebuilding of the processes to adopt the animals right out of foster that was one of those problems that needed to take place. So in the past, it was pretty easy. You would you know, have the animals in foster and then they would come back to the shelter and then you know, go through the normal adoption process. 
Well, with COVID, everybody working remotely, it really was one of those challenges. It really caused people to say, we got to figure out a different way that you know, we can go about doing this. So overnight, the world changed. And we as an industry were very adaptive, which is amazing, and really moved very quickly to embrace and support this. And now there's a lot of organizations that are saying, hey, you know what, this might be a better way, or at least a, a better way than the old way we were doing it before. So let's not just go back to the old standard. Let's look at how can we make this a regular part of what we want to do ongoing. So on to our first poll question. So one of the questions I wanted to understand from all of you is, what is your biggest challenge with your foster programs? Is it recruiting new fosters? Because we know that you always need more. Communicating with your fosters? Is it handling foster parent requests and questions and keeping up with all that? Or is it marketing the foster animals to get them adopted? So I see Nell's got the poll up. So go ahead and select your options. We'll give it a second or two and then reveal what the results are. I think all of these things are pretty consistent challenges that I've seen with many different types of organizations. All right, We've given everybody a chance to vote. So what did we come up with now? There it is. Um, so she's sharing the poll results. Hopefully it shows up on my screen as well. So it looks like recruiting new fosters and handling foster parent requests and questions are the two biggest ones. But you know, communicating with fosters um, is always a challenge. And at least one person was saying marketing the uh, animals to get them adopted. So pretty evenly spread across some of the top challenges. So very interesting. So let's talk about some of these a little bit. So one of the first problems is, as we saw with the poll here, recruiting new fosters because we always need more. And so there's a number of different ways that people can go about doing this. This was the program that I mentioned before that was done by the greater good uh, called Stay Home and Foster. And they, as I said, last as of last year, they had 80,000 uh, potential fosters that were signed up. The website is still up. I don't know um, if it was done globally or just in the US, um, but definitely check that out because it was you as an organization, you could sign up and then they would literally just send you the list, the contact list of all of the relevant fosters for your area. On 911 Foster Pets is a, is a smaller one that started up last year, probably last um, March, April. Um, it's again focused on trying to help with foster animals. So there's some recruiting that you, you can do there to get uh, to get more volunteers. And then one of my favorites is volunteermatch.org. It's one of the bigger ones where there's lots of people that sign up um, to be volunteers and you can post um, you could post kind of like an ad if you will, saying that you need fosters and people can sign up and learn more about the program. Certainly, I didn't call out things that normally people are doing, things on Facebook and uh, Instagram, any of those social medias to try and just raise attention, raise awareness within the general public that we need to get more fosters, get more people involved. So recruiting new fosters is always going to be a challenge, um, but I think there's lots of creative ways that people are finding to attract um, and get more people to be involved. All right. So now you've got all these fosters. Now the next question is, how do you know if your foster program is effective? So I'm curious how many people survey their fosters regularly or at least annually? How many track the data and statistics to see the impact? How many compare your program to others in your area? Or you know what? We don't really know if our foster program is effective, but you know, we think it is. So trying to regularly engage and, and track all of this stuff sometimes is a, is a challenge. So I'm curious to see how many organizations are regularly looking at the impact of their foster programs, comparing themselves to others, you know, surveying those volunteers and seeing if they're, if they're satisfied, if they feel engaged, if they feel a part of, you know, your organization's foster program. 
So go ahead and click your vote in there and then we'll reveal the results. All right, let's see what we got now. Okay, interesting. So the majority of people are saying they're not really sure if their program is effective, but they think it is. And then some of them are tracking the data and statistics to see the impact. So good, that's great. Um, it is definitely one of those things that as organizations have moved to a more foster centric model, they're having to step back and say, okay, well, it's we've got all these animals and fosters, you know, how are we doing? How are we engaging with them? So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so knowing if our foster program is effective. So one of the ones, one of the tools that's out there is this Maddie's Fun Fast 15. Um, it is a, essentially a survey-based tool which allows organizations to sign up and to survey your fosters. And there's a whole set of questions that it's pretty easy for them to go through and answer, but it gives you some real good insights as to how engaged the fosters feel, how supported they feel by the staff. Um, I was gonna say, there we go. Um, they produce a nice report, right? So what is your current level of fostering? Uh, activity with the organization, so you can kind of get a feel for your fosters and how active they are, how often people have had a foster animal in their home, how long they've been around. And then it gives you, you know, the normal things you would expect with a survey, which is percent favorable, you know, how happy people are to be a part of your program. But then they also go one step further and really break this down um, by highlighting green being your areas of strength, yellow, you know, potential future strengths, some opportunity for improvement, and red being the areas that you probably want to focus a little bit more on. And they do it on this average scoring system. So up to five is the highest. But what's really cool about this is you can kind of scan down through and find the areas where your scores are lower, right? Where the volunteers felt like, hey, we needed more training on, on basic training and healthcare, but you know, they felt that they were very clear on their role and had a good balance and could take a break when they needed to. So it's a really good tool. It's a free tool uh, provided by Maddie's, very automated that you can use to actually survey your fosters. You can do it I believe it's once every 120 days or so. So it's every, it's either 120 or 180 days, um, but every four to six months. Um, so it's a great way that your fosters can give you some feedback. And now you can start to look and say, are we improving, right? You can compare your results against other organizations um, and see how you're, how you're doing. They do allow the fosters to make comments so you can get some raw feedback from your fosters, things they like, things that they don't like. Um, you know, frequently feeling unappreciated, unsupported, okay, might be something that you need to improve upon your communication and engagement with your, with your foster volunteers. And then I think, okay. So then the second tool is also another interesting tool from Maddie's is the Maddie's Pet Assistant, which is now um, actually transitioned over to Pet Point, but it still works. It'll work uh, if you use Shelter Buddy. I know a lot of you guys use Shelter Buddy, um, but the Maddie's Pet Assistant is really more of a tool for tracking um, vaccination reminders and weight tracking. And it's, it was really designed to be kind of a support tool for fosters. So it's a great tool that once you've kind of got a feel for what your fosters are looking for and what they need, um, it's a tool to really help engage them, uh, make them feel like they're connected in with your organization. It's a free tool. There's nothing that they have to pay. One of the main things that it does is a regular set of surveys, different kind of survey than the FAST 15, and then it goes out on you know, very specific days. So the calendar shows the specific days like 1, 3, 7, 14, and 30, depending on the type of animal that the foster has. And it asks a very specific set of questions, um, and then depending on the way they answer the questions, it generates responses uh, in a portal on, portal on your end to determine is there you know, a need to engage because that animal might be sick or need some medical attention or anything like that. Um, so as of last year, uh, it's now managed by Pet Health, 
But as I mentioned, it's, it's still fully supported. It will still work with all of the major shelter management software, including Shelter Buddy. Um, but if you haven't checked that out, you can check that out. Um, and hopefully it'll work for your program to you know, give a different tool to help engage your volunteers. All right, so poll question three. So now, how, how confident are you in scaling your foster program? So you're either very confident, you can manage from 10 to 1,000 fosters, somewhat. We could probably get to 100, but that's about it. Or you know what, we're not really confident because our processes probably won't scale. So as you're thinking about your vote, I know this is something that we saw in the US quite a bit, was as these organizations tried to put all of their animals in foster, um, they learned pretty quickly whether or not their processes would scale. And they ended up having to you know, repurpose a lot of their staff and really rethink about how they could do things because it's, it's hard when you go from 10 to 100 to 1,000 to really think about how are you gonna keep you know, keep everything straight, everything from applications and checking in and questions and all that kind of stuff. So we'll give you another second or two here, and then we'll have Nell show us the results. All right. And here come our results. Okay. So the majority of our, our Participants tonight feel not really confident that the processes can scale. Some of them are somewhat confident, but nobody is very confident that they can manage 10 or 1,000 foster homes. Interesting. So it's it's definitely something that's not easy to do. Um, but I, as I said, I'm hopeful that with a lot of what has happened that our organizations are going to step up and then they're going to start to say, you know what, this is really a good model. And let's look at how we can uh, how we can scale. So um, scalable foster programs are possible, as I'm sure all of you know. When you think about what makes it scalable, and th these are things to think about, you know, how do you go from 10 to 1,000? Having that organized recruitment and onboarding process, how do you streamline that process so it's easy for people to sign up, to get whatever training, fill out whatever application, um, get matched in with the foster program? Right, so get matched up with the right animal, anything like that. Um, how do you have consistent ongoing communications? So once you've got animals and fosters, how do you keep them engaged? How do you create a support structure for foster parents? So who do they call when they have a question? I think we all know that particularly with newer fosters, there's almost always lots of questions. Um, they're not sure what to do or you know what to do if or the animal is sick or something that's just a generic question that they might uh, need a, a quick answer to. Um, trying to get the marketing and social media. The purpose of having them in fosters is to you know alleviate the pressure on the shelter to get the animals out into you know so different environments. But how do you now get the pictures and the videos and, and get the you know get those animals actually into an adopted home? And finally, you know, in order to foster to scale your foster program, you're going to need some integrated technology to be able to manage it all. So, dun, 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 dun. I'm really excited to talk about foster space. So, last year, literally, it's about this time last year when I saw what was happening in our industry, and I had always wanted to build out the technology side of Dubert for fostering. And when I saw what was happening with COVID and that really just doubled down and uh, we released Foster Space last, the first of June last year. So it's not quite a year old yet. And it's really, again, all custom developed specifically to try and help you manage a foster program at scale. So let me walk you through kind of how some of this works. So my one page on Dubert, for those of you that are not familiar with Dubert, um, I've highlighted, obviously, we're going to talk about fostering. Uh, there's a lot of other things that Dubert can do, partnerships, uh, transport. We support many different types of organizations and volunteers. Uh, but today, we're going to talk specifically about what the foster side of things do uh, in our module that we call Foster Space. So what is Foster Space? And all of these screenshots, by the way, come directly from the system. Um, not playing, you know, I'm not monkeying anything up here. This is all uh, live functionality in the software today. 
And so if you sign up on Dubert, you, you can get in as an organization and you'll see all of this same stuff. So what we tried to do was to really think about if, if we were running a foster program with a thousand animals in fosters, when you have a thousand animals in foster, you have a thousand people, you have a thousand locations, right? You have a thousand different things you've got to figure out how to do. So we wanted to try and build a dashboard uh, that would give you the tools that you know, would allow you to do this. So you, we'll walk through each one of these, but you can kind of see we've got it organized by a quadrant for recruiting fosters, uh, a quadrant where all of your current fosters are. One of the very unique things about Foster Space is it does two-way text messaging. So every organization gets their own phone number. Um, yes, it is Aussie friendly. So you can um, obviously get an Australia phone number. Um, we've built that into the system now. So you can do two-way text messaging. And, and this is really important because if it's just a one-way message, it's not really creating that engagement with your fosters. So the number that's assigned to you is your organization's number. You can use it for whatever you want. Nobody else can have that number. Um, and anybody that texts that number, it'll show up here in your messages quadrant. So you can, um, you know, just like you would normally do have a text message conversation with them. We've got a ticket, kind of a, a rudimentary, I guess I'll call it ticket system that's built in that allows the volunteers to actually open up tickets to you and for you to kind of keep track of requests and questions and things like that. So we're going to dive in here a little bit and go into each one of these and explain a little bit more about what went into this. And you'll find I really would love feedback, love questions, the more, you know, as you're kind of absorbing this and thinking about it, I'm always looking for new ideas to continue to build this out because I really want this to be a helpful tool for all of you. So the interesting thing about what we tried to do with the recruiting side of this, we know that of course you can do your general request to find fosters, right? In the Facebook posts and social media and other things. And that's not what we were trying to do. What we wanted to do instead was to say, let's make a foster request specific around a particular animal. And so the way this works is when you go in and you create a new foster request, you can select the animal from your organization. So we have the ability to import your animals in from your Shelter Buddy account. It's a real simple setup. You just um, contact Shelter Buddy and they'll enable it. Um, and you can actually determine which animals get pulled into Dubert automatically. Uh, or you can go in here and you can manually add the animal. We've done two things with the, the recruiting for a foster for a particular animal. The first was we wanted to provide you with the way to ask specific questions, right? So what you got to think about is that the there is, you know, a normal foster profile that a volunteer is going to set up when they sign up on Dubert. And it's going to have information about their household and, you know, references and questions about, you know, how long can they be a foster and dogs and cats and other things like that. So that's just kind of like table stakes is the way I viewed it, is there their information is going to be there. You can view that information about that person just by clicking on their name. And so what we did is we built in an additional question set that you can do that's specific for that animal. So maybe you want to know if the person has experience being a neonatal foster or if they have experience with behavioral challenge dogs. You can actually um, add those questions and for that particular animal, uh, they'll have to answer those questions and it'll come in with their, you know, with their application. We built in integration to Facebook because I want to make this as easy as possible. So what's really cool is you're actually able to just click to turn on. You can connect your Facebook pages and groups and you just click which ones you want it to go to. And when you hit publish, the system will automatically generate a Facebook post with the animal's name, picture, essentials, and it'll automatically post it to your uh, Facebook for you. And then when anybody clicks on that, it'll bring them out to the system and facilitate that uh, foster, foster application process, right? So we help them to set up their foster profile and then we send it to you to say, hey, this person wants to be a foster um, for this animal and you get to kind of decide if they're the best fit for that animal. So think about it as almost like an adoption management or adoption application, but specifically for the fosters. 
So just a couple of highlights. Again, you can import from Shelter Buddy, from any animal um, shelter software. You can ask specific questions, and then of course you can automatically post it to your um, to your social media. All right. So now once you've recruited your fosters, now the next question comes. Okay, what do you what do you do with these fosters, right? How do we engage with these fosters? Um, so the, the way that the current foster quadrant works in what we're doing is we're actually assigning an animal to a person. So you can kind of see my, my foster names down here. And then you can see this little linkage icon. You'll click the link icon. It'll pull up your list of animals. And then you can actually assign that animal um, to that foster. Now, what the really cool thing is, there's as, as I always like to say, there's two sides to do it. There's the organization side. And then there's the volunteer side. And they're both logging into Dubert, but they're seeing very different things. When the volunteer is logging into Dubert and they've got their foster profile, once you connect an animal to them via the current foster quadrant, right, in foster space, it pops up on their dashboard when they log in. And that's how they can actually uh, obviously see the information about the animal, but they can also um, ask questions and you know manage the animal's calendar. So it's basically a two-way system. Um, so you can see at a glance which of your fosters have animals, which animals they have. You can attach multiple animals. You can um, attach a litter of kittens or puppies if you want to. And then for each foster, um, all of these things, again, since I'm using screenshots to make it visible, but all of these are clickable. So you could click on the name of the person. It'll pop up their foster profile. You can make notes, you can put um, tags on them, any tagging that you wanna do. And the same with the animals. So you can actually put tags on the animals as well. What you see over here is another set of icons when a volunteer signs up on Dubert and they create their foster profile, we actually uh, verify their mobile phone number. And that's what kind of lights us up. So you know that when you're texting them that it's a verified mobile number, if it's not, um, if you don't see that icon, you see this little icon here. Uh, it just means that they don't have a mobile phone number. Uh, we've got the ability to you know, manage the calendar of the animal. So events that you're putting on the animal's calendar, again, the volunteer on their side can see, uh, can see the animal calendar as well. So the idea behind this is to make it really easy for you to now go through and determine, you know, these are the fosters that we've invited to become a foster for our organization. Um, and then these are the ones that have animals, don't have animals. We're trying to make it easy for you to kind of get a glance and see, um, you know, which animals are with which fosters. And then, as I mentioned, you can individually text them, um, you know, directly from the foster list or, or through the quadrant as well. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to Vicky's asked a really good question. She said, do foster caregivers sign up to a particular organization or do they do a general sign up? So it's a little bit of both, Vicki. Um, kind of the way I've designed this is that I want the organizations to be able to choose who they want to allow to foster for them. And I also want the fosters to be able to decide who they wanna be a um, volunteer for. So, the way it works is you as an organization can, can invite fosters. You can either, um, you can upload the list, like if you had a list of emails or something like that of your current fosters, we'll send them an invite, you know, facilitate them creating an account. Um, there's other, we also try to recruit other fosters so that um, you can actually search for other fosters in your area um, and invite them to become part of your organization foster program. Or when they sign up, they can actually indicate they want to be a foster for your organization, and then it comes to you um, to, you know, essentially approve them to be a, a foster within your organization. So we really wanted to try and make it flexible on both sides so that the fosters could choose, and, and obviously you as organizations still could choose uh, who's a part of your program. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the messages quadrant, it kind of works like you would expect, um, you know, for those of you that use an iPhone or um, anything on your computer screen that you're doing messaging, works very similar. Uh, again, it's your organization's phone number. 
and you can have multiple people in your organization. So you can have, you know, five or six or 10 people that are authorized users for your organization. And so that you can essentially manage the same text queue uh, without having to hand around a uh, phone from person to person. It's the same phone number. You guys can all be texting and, and receiving text right back from. So um, text send immediately. There is the, um, we do show if it's delivered when, it, it depends on the type of phone and system like that, but there are little messages that'll say it's been delivered if people um, allow that to, um, to do that. Um, I see Natalie has a question and I'll answer her question here as we get going a little bit further in. So the next quadrant, and if you remember this one's in the kind of like the upper left was a ticket quadrant. Um, the idea behind the ticket quadrant is that we wanted to make it so that uh, the volunteers could ask a question or you know ask for more supplies, whatever it is, without having to call you, without having to text you, without having to email you. And so we are we open these tickets up and you can you'll have it in your queue. So that if it's a non-urgent thing, um, certainly with an urgent situation, we wouldn't advise them to you know put in a ticket this way because you may not get to it right away. Um, but we wanted to provide a way that they could either ask a medical question, you know, or say, hey, I need more supplies or something else. And the tickets, you know, so it'll, the system will show you how many of each ticket there is. And of course, you can always add in uh, a ticket on behalf of somebody as well. Um, and we're looking at adding more functionality to this. We're looking at, you know, can we make it so you can assign the ticket to, you know, one of your staff or something like that. So that's something that's on the horizon for us to do. All right, so moving on to the really exciting stuff in my mind um, is the announce. So we've got a couple of functions that are kind of like global functions is the way I look at them. And I know this screen's a little bit small. The idea behind the announce function is that because you have your volunteers in the same system, you can actually go in and you could say, I want to send an announcement, whoops, to all fosters, um, or I can select, you know, fosters with dogs or fosters with cats. You can, you know, any of those organization tags that you built. Um, so however you want to do tagging for the people or the animals. So you can send announcements to say, for example, if you had them tagged as neonatal fosters, you could just put a neonatal um, and send a message to all the neonatal fosters. The way it works is you do um, kind of two versions of your message, the email message for those people that don't have a, um, you know, a verified phone number for texting. And then you do a text message version of it. So you kind of create two versions of it. And then we've given you the ability to schedule it for later in the future and even to make it recurring. And what's really fun is when you think about how this can be used, imagine just setting up a, a text that every Monday sends to your, you know, uh, neonatal fosters that says, hey, don't forget to send us weights or monthly to your dog fosters that say, hey, don't forget to you know, give them the heartworm pill. Um, these types of things can be set up. You can have as many you know, kind of queued up as you want. So you can send these immediately or you can schedule them to send later or you can set it to set, uh, send on a regular schedule. So we wanted to try and give you, you know, the flexibility to be able to, to do this. Um, so I think that's it for the announce. And then the other kind of sister function to this is the invite function. Um, the invite function works kind of think of it like a meeting invitation, like an Outlook invitation. So if you're inviting people to an event and you're trying to kind of track how many people said yes or no that they would go, um, when you send this invite, you can again determine who's it going to. And then if they accept the invite, it actually goes on the animal's calendar which both you as the organization and the volunteer person have access to. So the idea behind this right now is just to make a simple invite function. And one of the things we're looking at doing now is to augment it and add more of a, more of a scheduling function where you could create um, events and have people sign up for you know, a specific time slot. So we don't have that today, but it's definitely one of those things that's on our, our roadmap because we realize that that's something that is really important to organizations um, to be able to, to manage, you know, whether it be appointments or um, anything like that. All right, 
So now let's talk for a moment here, keep us on time here. Um, this is what it looks like from a volunteer side of things. So again, very different from what they see. Um, the volunteers have control over their profile so they can turn their profile on or off, make themselves an active and an, or an inactive foster. They can update their information. They can update their email. They can update their phone number. They can update any of that at any time. They don't need to, to go through you because every volunteer has their own login to the system. So they can fill out their foster profile or, or change their foster profile. We have a fun little foster quiz just to kind of get them engaged as to what type of foster they are. And then certainly if they're if there wasn't an animal they're fostering or an organization they're working closely with, um, they can look at kind of the board and say, hey, look, here's animals that need foster, and then actually make a foster application request that'll come to you uh, as the organization to approve or reject. And then once you have attached the animal, it shows up to them, as I said, so you can kind of see who the coordinator is. They can open up a ticket. They can make some notes. Um, and then once there's events, there's a, a little calendar there that they can kind of manage the calendar of their, of their foster animal. So um, we're really trying to build that relationship between the foster person and you as the organization. You still have control over who you know, has which animal and, and who can be a foster for your organization, but we're trying to also give them a portal so that they can be connected with you as well. All right, so we'll pause that one there. All right, and so for my final thing, and then I promise I'll open it up and um, answer questions. This is something we released, uh, I'm trying to remember, it was a little bit later in the summer last year. Um, and this is what we call ambassador pages. And the idea behind ambassador pages, as you can see, it's, it's almost like an Instagram page uh, for an animal. And the really cool part about this is the foster has the ability to essentially manage this piece, this portion of the ambassador page, right? So they can put regular posts, they can um, put videos, they can put photos, they can manage the likes, the dislikes, the fun facts. Um, what we're trying to do is give the fosters a way that they can regularly share Instagram style, right? Regular photos and updates on the animal. And then this becomes the primary page that now uh, when, when you're driving traffic, right, people can come out and they can see the latest on this animal, the latest pictures. And you know how it is, particularly I love to say with cats, um, dogs are like this one here is very photogenic, but cats sometimes are hard to really get their personality. So the ability to take video um, and actually upload video very easily is something that was really important. So they can do that. And then this side of the page, essentially, you know, they can't edit anything that is related to your organization. So you, you've got control over, you know, any of the, the specifics on the animal. And then the way it works is when somebody clicks, I'm interested, um, you can direct them right now, you can direct them to your website or to your application process, however it works. And then we're looking at, can we add on um, an adoption application, kind of like the foster application. So that's something that we're working to design right now. The um, foster can share, right? So they can share this, help promote the animal. And that's the idea of making them adoption ambassadors is to really engage them, um, get them to be a part of, you know, helping to find that animal their forever home. So super excited about the ambassador pages and, and how that can really, really help people. Okay, so videos are a big part of it. So I, as I'm wrapping up here, I did wanna mention that Dubert is Aussie friendly. Um, as I mentioned, we've got lots of capabilities to shelter buddy um, for importing your animal profiles and even your fosters. Um, you can actually import the existing foster people from your uh, shelter buddy um, system. Um, you can see like for any of the mobile numbers, we've got the ability, um, Dubert works in Australia, Canada, India, and the US. Um, and as I mentioned, it'll give you an, your own, you get to select your own organization phone number. So it's something that was really important and I'm really excited. This is kind of like our official launch for uh, Australia. So all of you are the official launch party. So thank you for that. 
So now I know the question, um, let's see, that Natalie was asking, um, and I was gonna say, so the way pricing on Dubert, right? So on how, kind of how does this work? Um, so Foster Space, as, as Natalie was asking her question, she said it shows it's free for all organizations for the first 10 animals. Um, and she said, but we have over 500 in fosters, you know, what's, what's the cost involved, all that kind of stuff. So let me, um, I should have embedded this into the, into my presentation. Will it let me move it over there? Uh, let me do it this way. Does that work? Yeah, that'll work. Um, so a couple of things. So one, I'm going to give you guys a, a discount code um, for 20% off because I, I certainly recognize and appreciate that the costs between the US and Australia, just the, the US dollar <laughs> um, is makes things hard. My goal with this is honestly to try and offset costs and be able to continue to build software. So as Natalie had pointed out in her question, um, th there is a forever free um, version module level, if you will, of Dubert. And even for sending text messages, you know, my goal is to try and help you as much as possible, to help as many organizations as much as possible. So the way it kind of works, you can do all the transports you want. Um, you can connect 10 animals, right, to foster. So all the texting and stuff like that. Um, they can upload videos and pictures. There's no limit there. Um, and I didn't really go into, we have a really cool thing called Rescue Tube. Um, the, the best way I can describe Rescue Tube is it makes it super easy to get videos and photos off of people's phones. You basically create a Rescue Tube bucket. The system gives you a number. They uh, download the free Dubert mobile app, type in that number, and then they can literally upload video from their phone right back to you. Um, so it comes back to the Dubert dashboard and then you can download it. So uh, really designed to try and help organizations to get video because we know how compelling video is. So you get 30 gigs of, um, of RescueTube uh, storage for free. And then in Dubert Elite, um, we recently updated this, I believe to $19 a month for rescue groups. But again, um, the, the code, by the way, is, is just the um, G, G to Z. Uh, if you put G to Z in as a promo code off of any of the Dubert plans, it'll automatically give you 20% off. Um, so Dubert Elite gives you some other features. You can add 100 animals, uh, 50 gigs on RescueTube. Uh, Dubert Pro gets you to 250. And then to Natalie's question, now there is no limit. Um, what we recommend or what I recommend is that if you're you know, wanting to go above 250, as she was mentioning 500, reach out to us um, because I would love to work with you to structure it in the best way. There, we might want to, or you might want to have you know, multiple Dubert organizations and multiple phone numbers. So I just want to help structure it in the most um, appropriate way. And I want to work with organizations as much as I can um, on pricing and stuff like that to try and make it as feasible as possible. Um, so Benjamin asked, forever free, is that 10 animals in total or, on, or only 10 animals at a time? So the way it works, Benjamin, is 10 animals linked to foster. So think of it as 10 people animal connections. So if you put, you know, if you had 20 foster people, um, but only two of them have dogs, that's only two, right? It's, it's all about the um, animal connection. So when the, you know, what I'm going after here is honestly is when people start sending texts, right? Um, even though most mobile plans and that are free today, I still have to pay for the texts. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure that we can offset our costs is really what I'm trying to do there. Um, but I, again, if you use the G to Z or, or G to Z, um, that will give you a, um, you know, like I said, a 20% promo code. So I want to make sure I leave time for other questions. Let's see, Rachel had a question. Is the foster care responsible for keeping their information up to date? Um, can they alter their data once they sign up? Yes, for sure they can. The um, foster person as I said, they've got their own login. They can log in at any time, um, update their information. They can even make their um, foster profile inactive uh, if they just need a break or something like that. And it'll, they'll still show on your uh, quadrant, but they'll just show as inactive. So you can know that um, they're not necessarily interested in um, fostering for you right now. So with that, 
I'm happy to open it up to other questions. Um, and I want to say thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to present to all of you and uh, happy to take questions. Thank you, Chris. So people, if you want to unmute yourselves and um, chat to Chris directly, um, you can do that or use the Q&A section, whichever works for you the best. We have had some great questions already, which um, I think have clarified a lot of things for people. And given that this is a recording, um, you know, other people will be able to listen to that as well. And I am really excited about the discount code, Chris. Thank you so much for that. Um, that is very generous. And our listeners and supporters and anyone uh, looking at, you know, taking the program on board will really appreciate that. So thank you. Um, yes, the Aussie dollar is uh, a little weak <laughs> right, right now. So most yeah. appreciated. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, like I said, I mean, my, my goal, I still work a day job. Um, my goal is to try and continue to build this out. And I, I do want to say I love feedback, right? I mean, I'd love for people to try it and say, you know, this is great, but what about this? Could you add that? Um, everything is all custom built. So we literally can do anything. If it will help you and it'll help you to be more efficient and save more animals, then that's my goal. And that's what I want to do. So that was one of my questions. The uh, I'm assuming that it's a, a rolling sort of evolution um, of all of the things that you do and that, you know, people can chat to you, organise the time to chat live or by email or messenger or whatever um, to talk about what tweaks might work better for them or to, to discuss those options with you and that it's a live sort of process. Is that the way it's done? Yeah, so we, um, I've got three full time developers <laughs> that are, wow. I keep quite busy um, working on things and, and we're, we're coming out this summer, I can't tell you all the details, but this summer we're coming out with another uh, new module that'll be all about managing, think about it, it's kind of like case management. Um, it's gonna be really super cool. You're gonna be able to, it'll have text messaging, two way text messaging integrated into it as well. Um, so we're really trying to continue to try and, I like to solve the hard problems now. People often ask me, why did you start with transport? That's the hardest thing. I said, that's why I started exactly. with transport, right? Because it's the hardest. And knowing that fostering is such a way to, to save lives, I, I definitely wanted to provide the, uh, the tools to do it. So it uh, yeah. looks like we have a couple more questions. So let's see. So Rachel is asking, asking um, do you envision expanding the program to accommodate more than 250 animals? So the answer is yes, it, you can accommodate more than 250 today. Um, the only reason we put the pro level at 250 um, was because above that, I'd rather talk to you and figure out how best to set it up. But absolutely, there is no limit. The system will not stop you. Um, at 251. We just kind of put that more on as a, hey, reach out to us because for 500 people, we really want to set you up in the right way um, to make it the most efficient. Um, Kathy said, looks like a great, plat excellent platform. Great presentation. Thanks, Chris and Judy said, Thank you, Kathy. Um, does this integrate with Animal Shelter Manager ASM? Yes, it does. Uh, a lot of Australian groups use that platform to manage their pet data. So yes, um, you can import your um, animal profiles from ASM as well. So great I think question. going back to the poll results, you know, it was pretty clear what the, the challenges are and the situations facing, you know, most groups running the foster programs now. And this is just going to help tick so many of those boxes so easily um, and just be easy to roll out with the staff, volunteers, you know, the whole the whole kit and caboodle so it, it's it's going to fill a lot of gaps Chris and I think it's fantastic I'm glad you started with the difficult questions <laughs> because this is always a question that comes up you know how can we be more efficient with our foster program how can we build it how can we manage it um, so this this is just a brilliant you know answer to that question yeah, thanks, Nell. I appreciate that. I, I, I often say I get my best ideas from the people that use it, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing is too crazy. I, I really like 
this is what I love about this is bringing technology and really challenging our thinking and saying, well, why can't we? So I tell people, if you see something that you use in your daily lives or your day jobs, um, you know, if there's a way that we can apply it to the animal welfare world, why not? Um, and so that's why we focus, you know, with Rescue Tube on trying to make it easy to get video. Um, mm. And with Foster Space, can we do not just texting, but two-way texting? Um, so it was something that was really important. Um, let's see, Rachel says, does Shelter Buddy sync with the program, i.e. does it up, update animal details with the foster carer? Uh, really good question, Rachel. Um, no, um, the API does not support that today. So I've talked with Cameron from Shelter Buddy. So kind of the way you, it works is you can import the animals, you can import the people, but it doesn't allow me to import the relationship between the two. So you do have to rebuild that um, in, in Duber. Pretty, pretty easy, but it is, it is a step you have to do. I'm just going back, Chris, to signing the foster carers up. For those groups that have an existing uh, foster program, and it might be a, a good sort of sized one, what's sure. the best way to get um, those foster carers going up and running in, uh, in foster space? Yeah, I'll show you. So there's a couple of things. So one, we can create a specific landing page for you, um, if you like, if that's helpful. Um, when you go into here, you can um, actually create, you can add fosters, right? So if I go to add a new foster, you know, you can search for them, or as you can see, you can literally cut and paste the emails if you want. That's one way that organizations do it. And then what it'll do, the system will, it'll keep track, right? That we sent an invite and who accepted and didn't. Um, that's probably the quickest way to get them in. We've done, as I mentioned, we can do, um, Sorry, hard to type and talk. Um, we can do a specific landing page that when they sign up through this landing page, the system will automatically send you a report every week of you know, who signed up um, via your landing page. So it's a great way to keep track of you know, how many of your volunteers or whatever signed up because I know uh, organizations work really hard to you know, engage their volunteers. So my goal with Jubert is that it's it's software, right? Like I always say they're, you know, they're volunteers, they want to work with you. I just want to give you the tools to make it make it easy to do. Yeah, absolutely. That that looks like a great way to do it. All right. Well, um, last call for quick questions if anybody's got any, but I'm sure Chris will be very happy to receive your emails. Um, just a reminder, Chris, of how to contact you. Sure. Yeah, pretty. As I always like to tell people, I'm the CEO, the CFO, the CIO, the support guy, you know, um, you can, you'll see this help support button, both in when you're logged in or not logged in. Um, you'll often get me responding to that. Pretty easy to get a hold of me. It's just chris at dubert.com. Um, so I love emails, questions. Do you run into bugs? I always tell people, don't be afraid to tell me because I can fix it. Um, I just got to know if you run into something or something's not working, it is software. It does break from time to time. Um, I, it makes me feel better sometimes when I see some of the big, big guys like Microsoft or Google have a problem. I go, all right, so they have problems too. You know, it's not just me. Um, but yeah, just chris at Dubert, or you can use the help, help support button. Um, would love to hear from you and answer any questions or help you out. And Rachel, if you want to chat, love to help you get your organization structured in the right way so that uh, you can support 500 fosters. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Chris. We really do appreciate it. And thank you all again for your attendance today. Um, we are aiming to have these events on a regular basis. So make sure that you're signed up to our e-news um, and our social media that we're connected there so that you get the announcements about future webinars and other events in the series. Feel free to send us suggestions on speakers or topics or anything that you'd like to see covered in this series. Um, thank you again, Chris. We really do appreciate it, not only for you developing such a brilliant uh, product, but also for coming and chatting us today and being our very first speaker uh, in this series. It looks like, oh, big thanks, Chris. Yeah, good on you, Vicky. 
Um, all right, everybody, take care. You take care, Chris, and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks all. Right. Thanks, guys.